And we're live. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and of course, welcome to our eighth free webinar in the 2020 Smart Building Series. And today, we are talking about conferencing devices, the occupancy analytics tool that you didn't know you had. And I'm really pleased to welcome Richard Bays, who is a collaboration project manager at Cisco WebEx. And today we're just going to have um, an in-depth discussion on the advances in video and audio conferencing devices and how, you know, they're being used more now to not just as, a, you know, a, your average conferencing device, but more as well about understanding the workplace environment, using the camera, using software, using other sensors as well. Um, so, Richard, welcome. Glad to have you. Perfect. Thank you, James. Great. It's a pleasure to be here. I am uh, uh, super happy to, to come talk to uh, you guys around, you know, how we're kind of approaching this industry, which is a little bit different, I think, than some of the uh, the other people that you've been working with and talking to. So I think this is a, a super interesting topic and to be able to, you know, expose to different parts of the business ways that Cisco and, and Cisco WebEx uh, can really uh, enhance that experience. Exactly, exactly. That's why I thought this is going to be uh, such a good discussion. Yeah. So the way it's going to work today, um, just a little bit of housekeeping from me, and then I'm going to ask Richard to um, uh, give a little presentation, and then we're going to do a live demo. Um, as far as you guys listening live, of course, we'd love to make this interactive. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, put them in the Q&A box. You should find that down on the right hand side. And then also um, what we will do, so, you know, towards the end, then we can take those questions as we come into the Q&A part of it. Um, yeah, and just also remains me to say that we are recording this. So it will be put up on all of our social media channels. You'll be able to find the recording uh, on YouTube, on SoundCloud and iTunes and on our, um, on our website later on. Um, so, of course, feel free to share it with colleagues or anyone you think would be interested. So, yeah, that's it from me for now. Richard, over to you. Perfect. Thank you, James. So, uh, yeah, like to give a little bit of people like a, a level set. So, so Cisco and Cisco WebEx in, in general is a, is a collaboration company and we're focusing on, you know, the video conferencing experience. And in particular, the area I come from is, is looking at the physical workspace or the physical device to have that, you know, in-person meeting experience. And you know, I, I think over the last few months, and it's been a while now, right? It's, a, it's a, you know, with the current world situation we're in, um, the workplace has dramatically changed um, and the workplace where we're turning to and different areas of the world are turning at different rates is going to have a pretty massive shift in the way that people collaborate in the short term and also in the long term as we, as, as we look to, you know, really redefine, um, you know, the value of, of going to the office. And for us, this is around the, what we call the hybrid workplace. And, and we have a couple of terminologies, the intelligent work, workspace, which we'll go into a bit deeper. But as we, in general, the hybrid workplace is, is something that you know, we strive on these kind of points of, of designing you know, to give you the best experience. You know, that's the you know, face to face where possible, but give you the you know, as, as, as better than being there kind of experience with the video conferencing. Um, and that obviously we want to meet beyond that conference room so that you can, you know, bring in people from different locations and different aspects. And we also want to make sure that things feel like not fatigued and feel very natural. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of people uh, over the, the last few you know, months who have been using laptops to be able to communicate, uh, whether at work or with, or with loved ones and, and, and friends and family, you know, definitely have an experience where it can become quite fatiguing. Uh, because of the audio experience or because, you know, the hunch, what we call hunch over laptop syndrome in some ways. Um, and, you know, our purpose is to be able to like deliver products in, in hardware and software, which can bring those great experiences to life. And we've been doing that now for um, over a decade, um, actually much more than a decade. Uh, and um, we've been quite successful in, in that market. And we wanted to look at how can we expand that and how can we bring some more value? Because Connecting with audio and video is one thing, but we have all these amazing, you know, sensors and features in this device. So how can we make it more intelligent? How can we bring more 
you know, a smartness to the to the experience, and also bring in that touch experience, and and, and that's something that we really we strived on, and, and make that fluid collaboration, um, which allows you to integrate um, and be supported by you know high insights and, and and analytics. And if I go towards you know like a a, a couple of summaries here of stuff that we recently announced, and, and we just went through a launch um, a couple of weeks ago where we launched the Intelligent Workspace uh, initiatives. Uh, we really needed to look at you know supporting that hybrid in office work from home uh, work style, and we had to really bring live data to our customers. So, to bring a little bit of a level set, our, our admin control hub, uh, what we call Web, WebS Control Hub. Uh, was a solution, and we'll, I'll demo a, a live demo of it in a little bit, but it was a solution that was very heavily uh, tailored towards device management. So the IT department who was configuring, you know, the, the, the actual in-depth functionality of how that device makes a call, et cetera. And we were like, there's an untapped potential here uh, that the IT department, which is becoming more of a workspace department, um, and it's accelerated over the last few few months with the with the current world situation, has interest and value and more of the data inside the room that we can offer. And that becomes around like understanding, you know, people count, capacity, uh, system, you know, performances, um, and some other data, which I'll, I'll go into in a sec. So one of the first things we did back in March, April timeframe was use our technology to display people count. So we have a camera in our devices, and I'm, I'm currently heading to, to our Cisco uh, WebEx Desk Pro. And, and this device has an intelligent camera that can actually scope you know, how many people are in the space. Right now, it's just myself and, and one person. Um, but it can actually uh, see how many people are in there and report that in a, an account. Now, you know, that could be uh, exceeding a certain capacity. Like you know, it could be uh, if there's three people in the room and, the, and a fourth person joins. We can act on that. We can deliver intelligence. So we delivered this idea of like displaying in the room that you're exceeding that capacity limit. And, and that was really useful. Customers have been deploying this quite massively at the return to work because it means they can be compliant uh, when it comes to certain uh, local regulations or building regulations in that environment. But we don't want to stop there. We were like, how can we go next level? How can we take this intelligent features we have, add more and really solve some of the big pain points? And some of the big pain points when it comes to smart buildings, I think, you know, it is very hard to find rooms. Um, and, you know, it's like, whether you know the building or not, it's like, you get told like, where is this building? Where's this room over here? With it on the fourth floor, third floor? How can we make it easier for, for end users and, and, and employees in the building to find those rooms? How can we, you know, really, you know, solve the over scheduling and no shows? If you talk to any facility manager, you know, I think one of the biggest pain points that we hear about is that, you know, a lot of meetings, like uh, upwards of 30 or 40% or, or of meetings, um, people don't turn up for. They book the room two weeks in advance, but they don't show up. Or they book the room for two hours, but only use it for an hour. And, and so these are like waste of space that we're like, how can we optimize this? How can we help companies realize the total utilization of their space from a meeting rooms perspective, and and how can that feed into the wider intelligent workplace experience? Um, the other part is around inadequate rooms. Uh, so this is like rooms that are you know potentially not the right size. Like you, I was at a, a, a company about a year and a half ago uh, where I walked on their floor and they all their meeting rooms were for ten people in size. Great, they're all you can have large meetings in all those rooms. But every single one of those rooms had one people in there doing a local you know, meeting over video conferencing. So, you know, they're only using 10% of that space. But in their scheduling uh, booking system, they are at 100% of capacity because every room was booked. So there's some inadequ inadequate usage that we really wanted to really help out. And that obviously goes into the kind of conflicting meetings, you know, and, and late meeting starts. There's, there's a lot of things we can improve with the, with the WebEx experience. Um, including like meetings running uh, uh, over time uh, as well and, and how, how we can extend that. But um, the last one is around like social distancing. This, is, this one's kind of new. Uh, and, you know, there's debates in the, in, in, in the industry whether, you know, this will be here to stay. Will room sizes um, actually stay the same size but become less capacity? Will they shrink in size? Um, we did a global survey at, at Cisco um, to a lot of uh, C-level managers ar ar around the world, 
And a lot of feedback came back that around 50% of, uh, of facility managers or, or, or IT managers felt that the floor plan will change post COVID. And you know, that, that's a, a large amount, it's 50% 50, 50 of floor plans changing. The office you, you might return to might not be the same, but what data are they using to feel that discussion of what to change the floor plan to? And that's where we really wanted to come in and be like, we can help in that. And that's why we launched the Cisco Intelligent Works, uh, Workplace. And this is a bunch of new sensors, which I'll go into in a bit more detail, analytics, a new touch panel called the WebEx Room Navigator, a room booking solution, and all powered by our automation. And uh, we really you know, want to make sure that this all uh, cohesively works together in, in, in symbiotic uh, ways. So. When it comes to sensors, we have a few. We have uh, our people sensors we have today and, and uh, we can detect presence through ultrasound. We can detect uh, heads and bodies through the camera. We can also detect if someone's wearing a mask. And this has been a big thing for COVID because you know, be able to be compatible with masks is quite important. Uh, definitely when it comes to the video conferencing technology where the camera crops the situation, but also from a tracking technology if we're trying to track utilization of space. When it comes to sound sensors, we're looking at, you know, our device has a microphone and it has a speaker. By using that microphone, we can detect ambient noise levels. We can detect overall noise levels. We can also test the, the acoustic dryness score and the reverb levels because one of the big pain points is that you design this amazing looking meeting room. This meeting room, you know, it might look like you know, the perfect Instagram uh, space, like the fishbowl, as I, as I call it myself. Uh, with four glass walls, hanging TV, uh, you got your you got your video conferencing device in there. You go in there do an audio call, and all you hear is echo, and it's very echoey to the far end. Now, you know, to go and troubleshoot that post installation can cost a lot of money, but if we have technology in the room that can deliver you the you know the results and the testing to say this room needs acoustic treatment. That goes a long way to make sure that your, your environment then is set up for success when it comes to employees, you know, not being annoyed by that experience. Because I think one thing's quite interesting, we go to this new world, is that the office has to be better than home. If the office is not better than what you can have at home, why would people travel to the office to be in there? Unless there's a specific, specific reason to meet face-to-face -face or do local interaction, if you want to go in and, and you know, go to the office to have these meetings, you have to have a tool set, which is bigger in my, in my mind, uh, than what you can do in the home environment. So I think it's very important to make sure that that, that uh, building from a meeting room and from a complete intelligent, smart um, uh, um, uh, uh, sense is, is great. The biggest one has been our new environmental sensors. And this is a, a big thing for us. We've uh, so, um, one of the things we've, we've always had cameras and we always, always had microphones and speakers, but we've never had uh, environmental sensors in our devices. So what we launched a few weeks ago was our new desk device and our new touch panel now has the ability to capture humidity, temperature, light, and air quality. This means we're on this device here, we're able to put it on the table and we're able to feed that information directly into the WebEx system and then feed that into the plat into the WebEx platform and deliver that value in different ways. Um, and this is quite an interesting approach because a lot of a lot of um, sensors that are inside smart buildings, at least from from my side. And, and James, later on, I'm pretty sure you can uh, ask some questions or, or back me up or, or or debate me on this one. <laughs> but a lot of them are uh, uh, put in like situations like on walls, you know, ceilings, but not actually where the person is sitting or where the person's actually interacting. And having a sensor close to the, to, to the actual where the, the employee is, is going to give you the best reading of what that employee feels. So a lot of questions I get asked is like, okay, who is this data for? And this data is for many different personas. It could be, you know, it could be for your IT admin to, to ensure that your meeting room is, is having an optimal solution um, from, a, from, a, from a meeting room or video call perspective. It can also be for HR to make sure that wellness is being, you know, best kept, like, you know, like maybe the temperature at the desk is more reliable or more interesting than the temperature at the wall near the door. 
So that's some interesting, you know, concepts. And uh, or maybe it's the facilities and you know, adding that data with the combination of other sensor data. So you then you have multiple sources of information to to generate, you know, your view of the environment. So this is something that we wanted to to, to give. And the best part about it is you you just need to have you know one of these video conferencing devices. You don't need to go and install additional hardware to get this value. You can get this by deploying a a normal Cisco WebEx video conferencing device and get this data in addition to the video conferencing experiences we have. So just to you know, give a summary as well, we also released a WebEx Room Navigator uh, for our uh, out-of-room booking experience. So we've just announced a, a room booking solution. And so the Room Navigator I showed in, in the previous slide, um, that is a table controller. So that's something that you go in the room, you click dial, use it as a video conferencing uh, controller. But we also have a version that can go onto a wall. And we call this the WebEx Room Navigator for the, for the wall mount. And it can attach to any surface, glass, you know, uh, 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 any dry, drywall, et cetera. It's PoE powered. So it's only one cable to power the entire device. And it allow you to be able to book that room and do more intelligent operations with the LED. Um, and also have digital signage so that, you know, uh, customers can deploy corporate imagery or corporate signage in, in that experience. So, it's quite a unique experience. And also we can have sensors on this device, which means we can capture the temperature inside the room versus outside the room in the hallway as well. So we're expanding more than just the room experience. But everyone asked me like, okay, this is great. You have all the sensor data, you have all these sensors, but how do I consume this? Because we've, we've had some of the sensor data for over two years, but to really consume it, unless you're a very large enterprise company or you have you know, a very invested facility department, uh, you might have trouble to be able to consume this in, in a way that, you know, works for you. This is why we kind of, you know, really focus on how we can develop a historical workspace analytics. And at this time, I'm going to jump over and share my um, uh, Firefox here and show you a live demo of this. And of course, I spent too long and it logged me out as, uh, <laughs> as it does. So I will just... Uh, log back in to to this while i do that i will just uh reshare this here i'm just going to log quickly back in because uh i think sh actually seeing the demo is uh is better than just hearing about it and and actually seeing what we have live in the system is going to show you kind of ways that you can use this in and in, in different ways i'm just going to log in now and We have a two-factor authentication, so I have to go through the process of, of logging in. Uh, there we go. So now I can reshare my screen and so right now I'm I'm logging into what we call uh, uh, WebEx Control Hub. Um, this is a tool that every customer gets, uh, and they're able to come in here and manage their devices. Uh, manage their workspaces, manage their meeting platform. So it's a single pane of glass uh, for the IT manager to manage everything in their environment. So I'm actually going to go look live at a device here in Oslo. So I'm, I'm based in Oslo and we have a couple of devices in Oslo uh, that has this turned on. So I'm just going to search this device here. Uh, so actually this is a workspace, it's a, it's a device. We actually have two devices in this workspace. Uh, but as you can see, I load up here, I'm now able to see a lot of live information. I can see that there's a capacity of two people. It's a meeting room. Uh, it's currently in the idle state. There's no one in there and there's zero occupants. I can also see there's some live environmental data and we can see that the sound level is currently, you know, it's a little bit of sound in the building, not much, it's very quiet. So it's pretty much ambient noise. Uh, the temperature in that space and the humidity in that space. And you can see right now they're currently in green. And this is because uh, we do have some thresholds which uh, we're basing on some global wellness standards. Um, they are Cisco thresholds. Uh, and uh, so uh, some that we are looking at how we can tweak over time as we, as we learn more here. Um, but if we go and view details, we can get actually a live view uh, and historical view of what's happening. So as we can see here, and I just have to move this out of the way. Over the last 24 hours, we can see there's been a, a, a little bit of a change in ambient noise. And um, one of the things we can see is that around between 5 and 6 a.m., the ambient noise increases every day. 
and decreases around 5 or 6 p.m. And that's based on the air conditioner in the environment. So we're able to track that change and, and, and see that change in the, in the environment. Um, and we can see the ambient noise obviously sitting there per day. We can also go to the temperature and we can also see that insight as well. And we can see the average temperature and a minimum and max temperature throughout that time. So we can see obviously just people being in the space obviously create the temperature increase. And we can see how the air conditioner unit you know, reacts to, to that increase uh, of, of temperature. And, and for people who, who prefer Fahrenheit, we also support Fahrenheit as well. And we can go live, like we can also look at raw data points for the last two hours. So I wanna get a more in-depth view of what's happening over the last two hours. I can see these live changes. Every dot here is a, is a change of reporting in that space. So we can go very granular, or also we can go very high level and we can come out to the monthly view and we can kind of see what's happening. Since we turned this feature on on the 13th, we can see kind of like the trends and changes that are happening there in, in temperature. And over on utilization, which I think is really interesting when we start thinking about kind of floor plan, you know, changing and, and how we modify the floor plan, um, is looking at how we can use this sensor and this technology to really like look at the capacity and see like, you know, based on the capacity, how much are you using? Um, a good thing here at this room is if I was a facilities department, I'll be pretty happy if I'm using utilizing 85% when occupied of the capacity it's meant to be. But right now the capacity is two people. So not very hard to get to, to, that, to that level. We can see here though, that there's been some times when we've actually breached the capacity today. So at, at one point in time, there was three people in this space that shouldn't have been. So we can see then every hour where there's mass occupants have, have, uh, have breached that. And also we can see the total time utilized as well. So every hour, how much of that hour were people in the space and not in the space. So we can get some really good insights of actual space utilization directly here in WebEx Control Hub to really feed into you know, whatever other systems you have to, to really you know, bring value um, to work out, you know, should the floor plan change, should the meeting room size change, um, and really you know, show the return on investment um, of, of, of said meeting room solution. So that's a quick demo. And uh, I wanted to say one thing as well before I kind of wrap up there is that, you know, this data obviously being a control hub is, is great, uh, but a lot of companies have their own systems and they want to take this data out and import it into their own system. So if you are a Cisco customer or you have Cisco in your network, we have a couple of ways to, to get this data out. We're working on working, we're working with a, um, another Cisco product called DNA Spaces which is involved in the smart building solution around Wi-Fi uh, geotriangulation. Um, and we're able to feed this data into their database to then match it up with all the Wi-Fi data to, to be able to do like wayfinding and, and, and density graphs and, and stuff like that. So some really interesting information that we can do there. And we're all working on an API that will allow customers to export this data uh, directly into your analytics tool so you can consume it in your way. Today, you can export through CSV, but we're going to give you a, a programmable API that you can then take this data out and, and, and use it. Great. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, that was actually going to be my first question about the API. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you stole my thumb. I answer every uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, because uh, that is one way I can see it being really interesting for people is, right, is, you know, being able to add this, add that data to perhaps some existing system they've got already. And um, yeah, but anyway, thanks for the demo. It was uh, very interesting to see it live. So everybody listening now, uh, we have plenty of time for questions. Uh, feel free to ask Richard or myself anything you want about occupancy analytics or uh, yeah, what's going on here with Cisco WebEx. Um, fascinating, I think really. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the things I pulled out, um, and we can come on to the sort of more general questions, because I think some of the things you, you started off with, like, you know, ties into kind of future workplace. And I'd be interesting to hear the kind of Cisco WebEx perspective yep. on that. But some of the things, um, you know, specifically about the, the you know, the, the product and the, the service, like, how do you how do you going to see this coming to market? Because um, I'm assuming you've already, you've already got like these um, existing relationships with like AV installers. So do you think they're going to like step up and become uh, more um, suppliers as well of smart building um, services? 
That's a really interesting question, James. And uh, it, it's definitely something, you know, I think the, the industry as a whole is going through an evolution at this moment. And when I say the industry, I'm, I'm probably more talking about the AV video conferencing industry in general. Um, and I, I think, you know, as partners uh, are working with customers, there's always, you know, uh, value adds that we that partners want to offer. And uh, I think in some ways, yes, some partners, some AV partners will evolve into offering more smart building and physical kind of, you know, solutions in that aspect. And it's not too far off kind of where we were a couple of years ago. So back in, in you know, five, six, seven years ago, facility was heavily involved in the purchasing uh, of AV equipment for video conferencing because it, it mainly lived in that department's budget. And I think over the last five or seven years, we've seen a shift in towards into the mainstream IT budget because more around kind of like the actual collaboration messaging video as one. Um, but I think now we're seeing a bit of a shift, uh, you know, not not back, but more like, you know, there's more um, uh, talking and, and working between um, facilities and IT. Uh, the fact that they're, I think they're trying to get similar results or outcomes out of the data and they both have access to data that both have relevance for. Uh, so I do see that AV partners will offer more smart building solutions and also as vendors in general, and uh, we'll probably you know, try to embed more sensors into devices because you wanna have less points of failure or less you know, technology physically in a space to deliver a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. A question come in for you here, Richard. Um, any plan to offer the other sensor types, um, examples being CO2, VOC, PM levels? Yeah, so it's a, it's a good question. I, I don't know if I fully mentioned air quality at the start uh, when I was in my deck, but uh, it's something I didn't demo in, in the demo there. So, so we do have an air quality sensor in our touch, pan, uh, touch panel, which is uh, based on uh, uh, PPB uh, measurement units. Um, we are looking at how we can expose that uh, to customers in a way that can uh, measure the quality, the air quality of the space, because it's very important. I think that's one of the big ones that HR uh, has been highly interested in is, you know, is this space meeting wellness standards from a quality mm -hmm. perspective? Are they being productive? You know, like productivity, you know, plays into that quite uh, quite well. Um, so definitely is plans. Um, this obviously isn't something we're just gonna be entering in with one product. Our entire product line uh, will have this. And we definitely are looking at future uh, sensors and experimenting, uh, you know, how we can bring more value to our devices over time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I did a uh, sort of panel yesterday um, remotely. Um, yeah, and there was some talk about that, especially around humidity, actually. I didn't realize sort of how, um, you know, humidity really has an impact on, uh, on performance levels. Mm. So yeah definitely. yeah, definitely. Yeah, something that needs I, I think to... if you're in if you're in Scandinavia, right, is uh we, we very have very dry, dry yeah, we have dry yeah. winters, right, where it's very low humidity. And I'm looking at my humidity sensor uh, above me right now, and in this room is 20 20 percent humidity, and it's not great. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's uh and, and I find that very uh, quite interesting as well, like across the globe, and, and you know uh, I think you know humidity monitoring and and it, is quite different in you know Singapore versus Stockholm versus, you know, New York, right? And uh, yeah. so I think it's going to be quite interesting with building standards and 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 it does have a big impact. Uh, you know, no one wants to feel sweaty and or dry in, in, in a meeting room. Mm. And one thing that I was thinking of while you were talking as well, I mean, um, you know, with this kind of hybrid office, hybrid workplace that, you know, we're becoming used to this year, like how do you ensure like if somebody's working from home, that that environment is, um, you know, adequate, right? Um, no one's going to invest in putting in like a lot of infrastructure into somebody's home. But of course, if you've got something like a, um, you know, some kind of audio conferencing device, there's just like an easy way to be able to monitor those things within yes. someone's home environment. It's, yeah. it's a very interesting question uh, in, in regards to kind of like also personal data versus corporate data. And obviously, you know, living in Europe myself and, and I've been in Europe now for, for eight years. And I, I lived in Germany for six years. So I've, I've experienced GPDR at its highest in some ways. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a very 
interesting topic because what we don't want to do is we don't want to obviously uh, um, breach people's privacy in their homes with, the, with this, this sensor information. So while our devices, you know, can be deployed in, in, in different ways and, and they may be deployed, you know, in some type of, you know, out of office experience, uh, whether that be home or whatever it might be, um, we want to make sure that we don't store that data at disk and, and, and writing it. And that's the stance we have right now uh, is that the data for home environments or when you're in a personal mode, kind of, uh, we call it personal mode in, in, in our world, um, is, should be available for the customer, like the user. Like in, in my house right now, I should be able to be and see, you know, my temperature, humidity based on this device and, and be able to react on that. Now, um, should we alert? That's a question I think we, we need to look at is, should it be more informational, information that the customer can consume? Or should we, you know, alert them when, you know, their home maybe is in a bad condition for, for productivity? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, question come in here again, um, and it's sort of um, about DNA spaces. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit on how it, you, you see it working with uh, DNA spaces and the and you, your offering together? Yes, I'm, I, I'm glad someone's bringing that question up. It's a, <laughs> it's a really good topic, actually. So it's... Uh, uh, I, I think this is where Cisco is, um, you know, really, you know, great for, for the customer's environment because we have a wider stack. We don't just do video conferencing or, or in, in my area. We have the networking stack with Meraki, uh, DNA and DNA spaces in, in this example when it comes to geolocation and, and some of the space initiatives. Um, so what we're working on at the moment is a way to integrate the what we call the WebEx control hub, um, which is the, the collaboration uh, portal with the DNA spaces portal. And this means that as a customer, you can then give um, authorization to DNA Spaces to be able to take that data from Control Hub and feed it into your existing DNA Spaces data and then expand that up with their collaboration of ecosystem partners because there are hundreds of partners that DNA Spaces interact with from a smart building level. Um, and this data can very easily be attached to their API to provide additional value. So this is what we're currently working on at the moment. Um, in terms of timelines, it is it is aimed for the early part of next year uh, in terms of some of that more uh, um, scalable integration, but nothing stops us today. So we're, we have customers today who are integrating DNA spaces with, with collaboration devices to export this data um, and to be able to provide value in that. And um, one of the things to, the plug, sorry, instead of the plug is the on the on the webinar we we uh, we did a, a few weeks ago, is we showed off a partnership with MazeMap, and MazeMap is a is a Scandinavian wayfinding company um, who deploy mapping solutions and allow you to be able to uh, to uh, uh, navigate and, and wayfind in different aspects. And we showed off how we can use our sensor technology to help you navigate from a overpopulated room to a room that has capacity. Now we use DNA spaces in that solution to help guide you on that wayfinding experience because we can give you A to B very easily, but how do we know if you go wrong on the path? Like what if it's, you know, two floors down and through 10 doors, you take the wrong left turn. How do we, that's where DNA spaces comes in at least right now. Uh, but I think there's a lot more opportunities with DNA spaces to combine that networking data from the wireless access points with this collaboration data. Mm. Yeah, no, it's an interesting use case, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and another question come in, I'll just take the opportunity, anyone um, who has any questions, please put them in. Um, but also, you know, if you've got any comments as well, I'm happy to take those. Um, just let me know. Uh, question here is, is there a floor pan view in the WebEx control hub? Really good question. Uh, so this is probably one of our number one requests from customers, and it's for multiple reasons. It's from the smart building side of things, be able to like you know upload floor plans and, and upload that ability. So today, we don't have this ability today. Um, uh, we had the ability to upload images of what the room looks like, but not a floor plan or a physical location uh, uh, attribute right now. This is on our this is on our roadmap. Uh, something that we're looking to deliver in the early part of next year is the ability to um, have a ability to set a location uh, on the device or a physical location. Because when you want to look at this data and drive this analytics, like having a look at one workspace is great. But like, how do I look at all the workspaces on this floor or all the workspaces in London, or all the workspaces in New York? And what we don't want to do is you have to go and manually go and add kind of like tags and inform and metadata to do that. We want to be able to dynamically build that those views up for you. So this is something that is a 
definitely on our, on our, uh, on our radar. And I think if we allow uploading of floor plans, that's just gonna allow us to enhance the services, not just for the admin or the, or the administrator, um, but also for the end user, where you can be like, show me a floor plan of this floor at the touch panel. And that's where some real power uh, can become. Mm. Yeah. Some of the other things I picked out I thought were really interesting was when you were talking about acoustic detection. Um, and actually, you know, I think even in some of the work that, that I do, it's like it becomes really clear about how important audio is. And like, if we're going to strive for like a more, you know, uh, to, to make our remote um, conferencing, our remote meetings be as good as, you know, the the face to face meetings, then like audio is a huge part of that. And like the quality is not particularly good at the moment. So I think being able to improve that or being able to tell people that it's not very good is really interesting how does that work how does that kind of acoustic detection yeah work? it's uh i think you're right like uh, you know audio is paramount and uh i think you know even when it comes to video conferencing uh you know not to uh i can be careful how i say this right but not not to say video isn't important but i think audio is above that like if you yeah, don't have a great audio experience then you're not going to have a great you can you can see people clear as day but if you can't hear them it's not a great experience so so video conferencing is almost like a bad word for it right it, it, is, it is the collaboration experience in general which is audio and video combined together and i think you know when we start looking at these acoustics uh we, we've been investing in sound for a very long time uh at, at cisco and uh we you know we wanted to make sure that one, our devices sound great. So the voice you hear from the far end feels like it's like got a lot of depth and is real, but also at the same time that the microphone is able to pick up a, a, your voice in, in some capacity. And uh, we've done an, a recent acquisition here um, with a company called Babel Labs, uh, which uh, was just very recent. And uh, we've actually just put that technology into our devices very recently, um, where now we can enable like an ability to do high level of noise filtering using AI uh, to try and negate some of the bad acoustic aspects of the room, but also like loud noises like uh, dogs barking or, or, or things blowing. And maybe at the, during the start of the presentation, you may have heard my dog come in and start barking at people in, in the driveway. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, unfortunately, I didn't turn on Babel Labs before that situation, uh, but that's what it's meant to really, you know, uh, take out of that, uh, of that. But back to the acoustic question around, around kind of reverb. So um, one of the biggest complaints or we, we are not complaints, but more like uh, annoyances that customers come to us about is that they spend you know, a lot of money on video conferencing. You know, the, the, these devices that you, you put in this room, you're, you're investing a lot of money into them to have a, you know, a great experience. And, you know, sometimes you can plan all you want around the network. You can make sure you have the bandwidth to support the call. But if you have four concrete walls or four glass walls and you want to walk in that room, you know, the technology can only do so much to help mitigate that. Um, so we're like, how can we use our technology that you put in the room to help people self troubleshoot that? Because the cost of getting an audio engineer out to test a room, uh, and before I joined Cisco, my previous job was in that industry, um, is quite a bit of money. And, you know, it's, it's something that uh, doesn't take very long. It takes a few minutes. Um, but you're paying a lot of labor for someone to physically go out on the site and, and do that recommendation. So we decided to use our microphones to be able to actually send white noise into the room uh, and then be able to record, you know, the, the reverb levels coming back through our speakers to give you the RT60 results. So we're able to deliver RT60 uh, values directly uh, to you, you know, with one command. Um, and we're about to expose this in Control Hub uh, towards the end of the year, where you'll be able to get an automatic result of uh, is, your, is your environment got good, bad, or poor audio acoustic. Uh, so that's something very interesting. Mm. There's a comment here. Uh, sounds like there's a great need for acoustic absorption across the ceiling and light sources. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, indeed. It's, uh, it, it's, and that's where the home environment comes in. I'm looking at my ceiling right now, and I'm looking at, like, you know, 
in, in the office, you you have a lot of suspended ceilings and, and a lot of people invest money in in these tiles, which are acoustic tiles, or or they put in these clouds that, uh, you know, that meant to artistically look good, but bring some value behind it. Uh, but when you do that, then you also kind of limit your ability to do uh, like ceiling microphones or, or, or tableless experiences with, with microphones. So it is a it is a combination of, you know, great microphone technology, because depending on when you put the microphone will obviously affect um, the, the experience a person has on the far end hearing from that room. Um, at the same time, you know, like if you're, if you have, you know, hard ceilings and, and your microphone is sitting, you know, two feet above you in, on the ceiling, you're going to probably have a, a bad day. Yeah, right. Uh, and just something else to elaborate on. Um, during your presentation, you talked about the presence detection, but using ultrasound, like that's yeah. super interesting. I don't know, like how, maybe you could just explain a little bit more about how that works. Yeah, so uh, this is a, a great technology and we use it for a couple of things. And uh, so what we, uh, ultrasound is a great technology, which, you know, humans are not able to hear and, and hopefully pets as well. If you bring pets to the office, they also can't hear the levels of ultrasound that we, we uh, have out of our system. But they allow us to be able to detect um, uh, basically people within the space. So, so the best way to explain it is that the device is, is shooting out multiple beams um, of, of sound and uh, at different angles. And we're recording the time it takes to come back to the system. And then if something breaks that beam um, and, you know, then we can detect that something is in the space. Uh, you know, it's uh, ultrasound is not good enough to tell you how many people. It's not used for accuracy. It's used for more, you know, a Boolean true false if someone is actually mm -hmm. in the space or not. The, there are other versions of ultrasound though. So ultrasound can be also used to, to generate uh, what we call tokens, uh, which technology like your phone can pick up. So your phone can listen to a token and it can be like, oh, I'm next to this system. So then they can give me a list of services that this system can do. Like, so I, for example, I can control this device with my phone just by being physically in the room. And this is a really great experience and a lot more secure than when it comes to Bluetooth or, or other technology because Bluetooth bleeds through walls. Uh, so does Wi-Fi, where ultrasound doesn't bleed through walls. So if the doors are closed and the walls are closed, then the, then the ultrasound is contained within that meeting space. Okay, interesting, yeah. So that, so, that sensor or whatever is there there's an array is there somewhere just above the screen where the camera is or something is that how correct it? so yeah on, on our systems it's a little bit different across the board but uh um we have these what we call room kit bars and they have a, an array of 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 microphones and and speak and and, and ultrasound uh, uh sensors to be able to, uh, to shoot out um and our, our entire portfolio has this, has this ability so across across the board yeah yeah and then with the camera i mean you talked a little bit there about the um, you know, the software now to recognize people. And um, I mean, how, how do you see that developing? Because again, you know, you mentioned earlier data privacy, G GDPR, you know, one of the things that you could do is sort of like automatic recognition of people, like probably using faces or whatever. But yeah, so I mean, is that something that people you've seen demand for or are people like a bit reticent about that? It's a good, it's a really good question. And, and this, it, it gets into uh, a very interesting uh, debate, depending on your stance on the situation, right, and different sides of it. Um, and also, I think culturally, this is different across the world as well. Uh, so we do have a technology today uh, called People Insights and our WebEx Assistant, which allows um, companies to up, uh, well, users and companies to, uh, to record their photo um, uh, to be for, for facial recognition and we're able to detect uh, people's faces and produce name tags. And right now this feature is being used in a video conferencing setup to say, you walk into a room and there's you know 10 people sitting down, who is that person I've never seen before at the top right? And the name tag can help you, you, know, you know, articulate a name to a face uh, or vice versa. Where it gets interesting is around authentication. And uh, so, Today, the technology we have, we, we are not going to be using today to do authentication because there is, uh, there is not enough accuracy uh, there to, be, uh, to stop false positives or, or abilities to, to work around it. Um, but it depends on you know, 
how much accuracy do you need for the value of the service? We, we don't we don't think of we don't think of like password management. We think of like you know meeting room management. I think mm. there's some value there which isn't needed. Uh, even the accuracy isn't needed as much, so to speak. So I think it'll be interesting as we go down towards maybe two factor. Uh, so you know without giving too much away, but like the idea of like uh, walking up to a system and it knowing it potentially is you, and then alerting you through other mechanisms to confirm uh, if that's mm. you. I think that's a more safer way of, of, of interaction um, than depending on, you know, just your face at the, at the system to, to do that. And, you know, that might change, right? You know, if we look at the iPhones and Face ID and, and, and how they work, they work with death centers and, and different aspects. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, we'll never have this experience. Uh, just at this moment, I think that's kind of where we're heading towards. Yeah, sure. But even if, I mean, just being an anonymized data, right? You would just it would give you a good people count. Um, yeah. So that, you know, off the bat, that's that's really useful. And that's right? what we're focusing on as well. Like we're we're more focused on the anonymous aspect here because I think the value we see initially is around how this data can be used for, the, for from the business perspective to guide decisions. Uh, in, in how, you know, to do floor plans or, uh, you know, the adoption of, of spaces, are they being used correctly? Because if you're investing, you know, this money in, into these systems, uh, you want to make sure that they're actually being utilized. Mm -hmm. And um, while they, you know, we do, do, we do detect whether the device is in a call or not, um, from a device analytics perspective, what if the workspace is being used seven hours per day for one-on-one -on -one meetings where there's no, there's no device interaction? You want to track that as well. So it's more than just tracking device usage; it's tracking the entire workspace usage. Mm. Yeah, exactly. A uh, question here for you: um, Are these advanced features like ultrasound presence detection, um, RTC readings for a room, available in all Cisco devices and in any registration? I.e., I guess like you know, depending yes. on what what account. Cloud and yeah. prem. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's a good question. It's obviously someone who had a bit of Cisco knowledge. Uh, I can see there. Uh, so yes, we. Uh, um, yes, so we do have two deployment types for people who are not aware. We have a fully cloud deployment type and we have an on-prem deployment type, which is uh, uh, has been traditionally used for customers who have like air gap requirements or vice versa. Um, so yes, the answer is this, this, this technology is available, well, I'll, I'll, I'll phrase this correctly. Uh, ultrasound technology is available across our portfolio in terms of presence, including so any device that can work on our cloud today. Uh, it's available by local API, but also by the platform. Uh, so that is available today. Uh, the audio acoustic uh, tests are available on our current room, board, and desk series devices. Uh, so people who have got Cisco devices, which may be like the SX, MX range, unfortunately, they do not support that. Um, and the environmental sensors that I, I mentioned earlier are supported on the new Desk Pro and the brand new WebEx Room Navigator. The good thing, the new WebEx Room Navigator can be um, retrospectively added to a room kit. So if you have a room kit today installed and you have a touch, what we call a touch 10, you can go and unplug that touch 10, plug in a room navigator and get all that extra sensor data. You don't need to go buy a whole new device to get access to that sensor data. You just need to buy the new touch panel. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the device that can sit on the wall, right? Or on the desk and tell you what if it's, Correct. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just in this, I know we've, we've got about uh, five minutes left people. So if you do have questions, then uh, now is the best time to put them in. But from, from my side, you know, just to finish off, I think interesting to get some of your thoughts on, you know, where we are and perhaps some of the, the, your learnings from like the last year or so, you know, with with this massive shift to remote working. I mean, obviously it must have been a busy year for you guys, but I mean, <laughs> how, how do you see this evolving? Um, you know, a lot of people have talked about, you know, more now like a hybrid experience. I've even mm -hmm. heard and read articles about like this sort of more hub and spoke way of, 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 of having, an office, having an office portfolio. But, um, you know, what are you hearing from customers? What are you seeing with like trends mm -hmm. in, in the, how people are using your devices now? Yeah, I, I, it's a really interesting question. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of my experiences before COVID and then as, as, and as we've gone into COVID. So uh, before, before we were in the COVID times, I, I spent about a month out in the Asia PAC region. Um, and I was uh, 
traveling, you know, talking to customers, researching kind of like, you know, how they use work environments. And, and you know, this is obviously before we kind of knew where we were heading down um, at this path of, of the hybrid workplace and, and kind of saw some really interesting trends out there. So um, I, I'm seeing a trend where like, at least when it comes to kind of workplace experience, APJ or Asia, Asia Pack in Japan, as, as, as we call it here in, in, in Cisco, um, they're definitely, um, I would say more on the bleeding edge when it comes to kind of reinventing the workplace in terms of like a hot desking style scenario, uh, not per, you know no, no permanent desk, meeting room, like a lot of meeting rooms, a lot of huddle spaces, uh, a lot of things what we call focus rooms, which are like you know the rooms that are just for one people that you can you close the door and, and have some silent time and you know with a device or not, and then I think we saw Europe was maybe like like a little bit behind that in terms of adopting some of those, some of those standards, but definitely saw some, uh, some trends happening there. And, and, I, and, I, and I think America may be the bit more conservative at, at the time. And this is, you know, a very clear pre kind of this, at this aspect. And then I think, you know, when February, March came around, you know, everyone, everyone had to adapt. Everyone, you know, had to go into, you know, this, whether it be a full lockdown, partial lockdown, or, you know, company just decided to, to go into, into this remote uh, work experience. And I think, you know, it's uh, initially, you know, worked quite well for some companies who were well equipped. I think companies who didn't have the technology to have video conferencing uh, felt some pains for the first few weeks, which is why we saw an increase in video conferencing services worldwide. Um, and I think now it's as it's becoming more reality that this might become not like permanent of this situation. Like I, I, I do believe and, and I have to, right, in some ways that uh, the office will become, you know, you know, a place that you do go and do a majority of work at in, in some capacity. Um, but I always have this feeling that, you know, the, there is a, an, a more a, a bigger barrier to like leave your home now to go to the office. and to make that barrier less daunting for, for, for employees, we should equip our offices with technology which allows employees to, to kind of view the status or state before making the journey. And that might feed a little bit into the hub and spoke technology a little bit in, in some ways, right? In terms of like, you know, you, you might, you know, be at home and your home is a spoke to the office in, in, in some capacity and you kind of get more investment for more technology at the home. Um, but if, if you are 20 minutes away from the office, would you commute without knowing that there's a desk for you or there's a room for you or that there's all the people you want to meet are actually in the office today or, or have intended to be in the office today or are available to be in the office today? And I think that's where we're, we're heading towards. The trend is that People want to have more information at their fingertips. And that, whether that be app based on phone, you know, whether it be on a device itself, but you know, having that window, so to speak, in the office is gonna be critical in the next few months into the future. Yeah, some really interesting points. What stuck in my mind that you said earlier, office has to be better than the home. And that ties into there what you were saying, right? Because if we're expecting people then to you know, make that journey into work, they've got to have the right experience to, to, yep. to commit to that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And uh, it's super interesting. Well, that pretty much wraps it up today. Um, thanks everybody who's out there listening live. As I said before, this is recorded. So it's going to be going up on our website later today, probably. Um, so really uh, appreciate it if you want to share it with uh, colleagues. Um, and indeed, um, yeah, you know, any feedback you have for us, we're, we're, welcome, we're welcome to hear it. And obviously, very much appreciate uh, Richard taking the time to do this today. Thanks. Yeah, no, and I thank know you, you James, for the, <laughs> no, th thank you, James, for inviting me along. And, and I, I think, you know, this is an industry which is, uh, uh, is evolving quickly and fast and an industry which, you know, obviously Cisco uh, wants to be involved in um, and, and wants to help customers be able to, you know, reach their outcomes. And uh, I think just in general, this, the smart building aspect for, for me personally is just so fascinating. I've been involved in this for three or four years now and uh, uh, the innovation in the industry is mind blowing. Yeah. If, um, if people have questions for you, I know you're on Twitter. Is that a good way to engage yeah, with so you? 
Yeah, you can reach out to me on Twitter at, at collabrich. And uh, so C-O-L-L-A-B-R-I-C-H. Uh, you can reach out to me there. Also LinkedIn, uh, please, you know, if you're interested in connecting, I'm happy to, uh, to chat on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm very active on both of them. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Great. Thanks, everybody. Um, that wraps it up for today. See you soon. Bye-bye.